So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us live. I'm super excited. My name is Rosie for anyone who doesn't know me. I'm the calligrapher behind Wander Crafter as well as the founder and the coach of the Craft Academy. I often get asked if the Craft Academy works outside of North America and Monique and I are here to tell you that our methods work all around the world. I'm super excited to introduce Monique. She's the artist behind Get Fonted in South Africa. She's known for a gorgeous black and white aesthetic and creating these unforgettable brand activations. She's actually recently worked with Dior, Netflix, Mont Blanc, and Lottine, just to name a few, which is super amazing. These are gorgeous brands and I'm really excited to talk to her about it. So I'm gonna have Monique introduce um, a little bit about herself before we kind of jump into it. So give us a little bit of a background, uh, your name, your business yeah, name, so and- My name is Monique, here. like Rosie said. Um, uh, I am based in Johannesburg, South Africa, and I am the calligrapher and artist behind Get Fonted. And I started my calligraphy journey in 2017. Very glad to be here many years later. <laughs> I started in 2017 too, so I feel like we're oh in all the same timeline as <laughs> different locations. <laughs> all right, so we're here to talk about Monique's transformation. She actually joined the Craft Academy in April of 2022, so just almost a year. She actually went from having zero hits on her website and fully relying on referrals and agencies for business. And ever since she joined the Craft Academy, she's actually been able to have over a hundred organic hits on her website using the SEO tips provided in the Craft Academy. And for anyone who hasn't joined or heard about the Craft Academy yet, it's a step-by-step -step coaching program that's designed to take you from zero clients and turning your expensive hobby into actually building the business of your dreams and working with some of your ideal clients. It's complete with templates for pitches, emails, brand decks, contracts, literally everything that you would need for your business so that you can find your niche and build multiple forms of income and ultimately build a sustainable calligraphy profitable business. So if all of this resonates with you and you want this transformation for yourself, all you have to do is book a call with me and my team. Go to wondercrafter.com apply and then let's chat. So Monique, we're going to dive into your journey of entrepreneurship. Tell us how you got started and what your journey to calligraphy yeah, and entrepreneurship Yeah, so it started was. in 2017. I had a job at an architectural firm and I really needed something creative to do in my evenings to unwind from my incredibly stressful job. And I had seen some pointed pen videos on Instagram and I thought, oh man, that's so easy. I could probably do that. And calligraphy called my name. I'm very glad that I answered. And a few years later, I ended up registering Get Fonted as a business. Oh. That. So are you still working for that architectural firm or? So I actually ended up leaving the job in 2018. I started at a software company in June of 2018. Um, I'm in fact a board member and a director at the software company. So I in fact do that full time and I do get fronted work in my evenings and on my weekends. So yeah, still work full time. So do you have any plans? plans to go full-time with Get Fonted or is this going to stay a part-time? So I really enjoy the balance between my day job and my calligraphy. Um, calligraphy is a great creative outlet still for me and I also think that it's quite beneficial because a lot of the information that I have both from running my calligraphy business and running or being part of a software business, it's quite interesting because both of those actually feed into each other in terms of dealing with my clients, in terms of, you know, problem solving and that sort of stuff. It really is quite beneficial to, to have both sides of, of that spectrum. Oh, amazing. You know, I do get that question a lot as well, whether the Craft Academy is meant for people who want to go full time with their business. The answer to that is exactly what Monique is doing. Like if you still feel fulfilled and that you're learning, and you're feeling satisfied with your full time job, you don't have to take your calligraphy business full time by any means. So definitely don't feel like there's the pressure for you to go full time. Tell us what your specialty is. So I am a modern calligrapher by trade with a focus on calligraphy glass engraving. So fragrances, liquor bottles, whiskey glasses, that sort of stuff. Mostly engraving, more more than paper. Yeah, and I, I know we it took a little bit for us to kind of shift over yeah. to that point as well. You went from paper to engraving. So we'll talk about that a little bit after. Give us a little bit of a timeline of like you started your business in 2018. We actually met in 2022. So give us a little bit of like your entrepreneurship timeline from like start to finish and like when you started to see results. Okay, so yeah, I started my calligraphy journey sort of late 2017, started taking on work. Get Fonted was really just an account on Instagram for me to sort of share my calligraphy journey. I was mostly doing work for family and friends, 
mostly for free, not super great. Um, and then I decided to invest in the Craft Academy because I really needed a way to, to elevate my business and I also needed someone to keep me accountable. Something that I had struggled with severely before before the Craft Academy. Yeah. Being accountable for my own actions and inactions, actually. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we love doing that. Like, as the coach, I really do pride myself in getting to know all of the students that we have, even though our community is growing. I still continue to get to know the students one by one just to make sure that I can see the potential in everybody. Let's actually talk about what your business looked like prior to the Craft Academy. What did your daily work and life schedule look like when you started Get Foster? So initially it was pretty sparse in terms of calligraphy work because I was doing a lot of work for free and a lot of work for you know friends and family so if someone needed something written pretty it was me that's where they went so there wasn't much activity going on but there was a lot of practice behind the scenes for for me uh, in terms of calligraphy to obviously develop my style get more confidence and obviously work up to what I'm doing now which is obviously trying to continue working for for these luxury brands like Dior, L'Occitane like all of those types of things. So what were you selling and what were your profit margins so like? I've never really done products. It's always been service based, but my profit margins weren't incredibly high. Initially, we were sitting at about a 50% profit margin, which when you're doing service based work is really not that great. It could be, could have been a lot higher. Right now, I'm probably sitting closer to 90% because I understand how to charge for my time and my skills. I understand what they're worth. And I'm also a lot more comfortable and a lot more confident charging what I am and having those profit margins that high. Because in the beginning, that confidence was not there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I hear you. And that's amazing to go from 50% to 90% yeah. profitability. That's massive. What was like the biggest like factor in you being able to scale your profitability to that amount? The main thing for me was seeing calligraphers who I felt were at the same sort of skill level as I was, being really, really open about what they were charging. Um, for the types of projects that they were taking on. And I realized that I was taking on a lot of the same projects, but I was charging way less. And initially I had sort of tried to reconcile that with, oh, I'm in a different country or, oh, the exchange rates or, oh, this. But ultimately my skills are the same, irrespective of where I am in the world. And we should all be charging the same rate because if you don't charge the same rate, you're just you're putting everyone out of work and that's not really fair. Yeah, and you you deserve to be compensated for your time no matter where you are, Absolutely. no matter what your skill sets are. Um, because you're still providing that yeah, value to 100%. the client, right? So Mermaid Magic asked, um, how can I learn what competitive rates are? So do you want to give a little bit of a gist of what you were charging before in South Africa? And then when you, you know, started to see what all the international people were yeah, doing. Sure. So give us a little bit of a back. So there. the easiest way for me to reconcile my prices was not necessarily in studio work or commissions because those are very much on a, on a case by case basis. So that's a little bit difficult to try and charge what other calligraphers are charging. But my realization came in with events. So what I found was I was, or I felt at least in the beginning, comfortable charging 750 Rand. So I'm not quite sure what that is in dollars currently, not nearly enough, but 750 Rand an hour for calligraphy and engraving. Right, that's looked it up. It's about $44. Yeah. US so dollars. I then had raised my rates to, I think it was 1,250 Rand. So just shy of double that. Yeah, so that okay. that's where I was sitting. And then after I had booked quite a few more calligraphy events and engraving events, I realized actually it needs to sit closer to 2,000 Rand. And I know there was a, a huge pricing conversation that happened a little while ago between, it was mm -hmm. Sunday Arco, so Jody and Sylvia, and mm -hmm. I think it's Nielsen Letters in the UK. There was a, a massive discussion and everyone was super, super open about what they were charging hourly and why they were charging what they were charging, how they raised their rates, because mm -hmm. ultimately Ultimately, when there is transparency with pricing, everyone wins and you don't have agency like the very famous one whose name I won't mention here, who does work internationally and they do try and undercut because people don't understand how to value themselves, not only in their own country, but internationally as well. Yeah, exactly. And we had our own pricing kind of conversation in the Craft Academy as well. We talk about it yeah. a lot in our coaching calls. We're always talking about pricing and I like to say that we're flexing our pricing muscle because the more you work yeah. it out, the easier it becomes and it just becomes more approachable. So so, you know, that's a conversation that we have every single week, I would say. And even, you know, we have conversations on Facebook mm -hmm. as well. So, you know, that's that 
and is there and we're always supportive of our members yeah. in raising their rates. So, okay, so you raised your rates, you got to a 90% profitability rate, which is incredible. What was the turning point for you to decide to really invest in yourself and in the Craft Academy? So I had actually found you, Rosie. Um, you were an Instagram suggestion based on the other talented artists that I follow. And of course, being a talented artist yourself, of course, I could <laughs> not follow you. So I had actually stalked your page for a little bit um, and I saw that you offered a calligraphy and creative focus business course. And you know what? I was sold because I've paid for other business courses and other creative of courses and as great as what they are they really they weren't right for me because they lacked the the depth of knowledge that the craft academy has having someone like you keep us accountable and being there on every single coaching call really really helped make me realize that a business course isn't a business course unless you work on it you need to work on your business to call it a business and to to say that you completed the course and honestly like even though you complete the modules in the Craft Academy, you're honestly never done learning because there's always information being added. And of course, there's always people asking questions in the groups where you can answer based on, on your experience. And you can also take advice from other people, which is incredibly helpful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The community was one of the biggest things that I really wanted to focus on when I was creating the program. I wanted to create a a community that is incredibly supportive and shares opportunities. You know, I have a couple of calligraphy friends, but I didn't feel like I had mm. co-workers or, you know, a supportive group. I had like maybe one person that I called upon every single day, but like at the end of the day, it helps to have so many more people like supporting you and, you know, brainstorming and stuff like that. And it makes a huge difference in your mentality, your growth. So yeah, I'm yeah, the, super happy that you the, are. That community it. aspect was actually one of the biggest things that drew me to the Craft Academy because I am, as far as I can tell, at least, I am alone in South Africa in terms of what I'm trying to do. So having a community of other calligraphers and business owners is incredibly valuable for me. So I do have a community, even though no one is on the same continent as me. <laughs> Actually, I want to dive into that, too, so we can kind of shift the conversation a little bit. I get a lot of people coming in saying, like, I am not, you know, calligraphy is not really big here. Live events is not really big here. Can I bring this to my country or to my remote location? So let's dive into that a little bit, because that you are what we call a pioneer of the area. How hard has it been for you? It has been quite challenging, um, especially because calligraphy and engraving, in terms of at least live events, it's not as big a thing here as a lot of calligraphers might find in the States. So trying to get that value proposition across to clients is a little bit difficult sometimes, or even for people to understand what calligraphy actually is and to understand that, you know, I don't just do wedding invitations or I don't just do place cards, which is what people assume and they're not wrong. That's just not what I do. So definitely doing the work that you want to get hired to do is incredibly important. Having some sort of portfolio of work, because I did start off thinking, oh, I'd like to do events. With what portfolio? <laughs> if you don't have the work that you want to get hired for and you don't have you know, a website where people can find you, it's going to be incredibly difficult. So pioneering is, is great and it's very difficult and it, it can be lonely if you're not part of the Craft Academy, but having a portfolio of work is incredibly important no matter where you are. If you are in an area with established calligraphers and, you know, an established event calligraphy um, field, that's great, amazing. But if you are in an area like myself where that isn't really established, again, that portfolio is so, so incredibly important. You know, people eat with their eyes first and it's really important for you to be able to visually yeah. display what you can and cannot do. I also found that like, as an engraver, people are not as familiar with engraving. I know for us, like we are in yeah. the industry, we see it every single day. Like people don't really know what engraving is unless they yeah. see it and feel it in person, right? So having visual images that display that and like people can see it and kind of understand yeah. what it is without actually touching it, that makes a huge difference yeah. in actually selling yeah, 100%. it. Yeah, 100%. It's also trying to convey that it's it's an experience. It's not just an item. It's it's the experience of having someone there, having an artist there, keeping you know your guests entertained while they are at an event or whatever it might be, and, and making it special for them and, and giving them keepsakes because who doesn't love something with their name on it? Everyone does. <laughs> exactly. So I know when we first started working together in April of last year, you were primarily getting jobs from agencies and you were just 
specifically doing yes. services on paper products. How hard was it for you to actually pitch your engraving services? Because you know, we, we worked on this together on our coaching calls. Give us like what the process was like and how difficult it was for you to pitch your new services to your existing Yeah, so trying, trying to convey that engraving is a permanent thing and it's an experience that doesn't get thrown away, you know, like a paper place card or something like that. That was incredibly important. One of the things that was also very important is not just pitching myself to new clients, but re-pitching myself to existing clients to try and shift them in terms of the direction that I wanted to take my business. So while they were coming to me for paper calligraphy or, or paper calligraphy services or writing services, they understood how I worked and they could see that I wasn't just trying to, you know, make more money off of them. I was providing them with a value add, not just for, for them, but for their clients as well. So they, they felt good about giving an even better option to their clients. So we sort of were elevating everyone. That was, it was incredibly easy to do it that way around. What really helped was yeah. us talking it through during our coaching call. Um, but we also have templates for these emails and these pitches mm -hmm. already provided for you. So all you have to do is take that information, mm -hmm. adapt it to your area and find the right people to pitch it to. So we really try to make it as easy as possible for our members. What's great is that you don't have to start over again and again, and you don't have to feel like you're paving the way by yourself. You actually do have a community mm -hmm. behind you who's supporting you. And I think as your brand starts to grow in South Africa, I think that will continue to to inspire the next generation or even new calligraphers coming out and yeah. then you can start building your own network out there remind me i like i, I know you do this but you you also teach calligraphy yeah. classes yeah. in south africa right yeah so i have, i have had quite a few students yeah. who would like to start businesses so that should that would be quite cool once they once they get confident enough to sell their work that would be amazing yeah so Monique is inspiring the next generation. She's paving the way for calligraphers in South Africa by herself, <laughs> really. Like she has a community here online that's either to support her, but she is building her community one by one. Again, she's the pioneer and she's doing amazing right now. So we're like super <laughs> excited for her. So let's get into some of the tactical stuff because I like to be as tactical as possible with these live mm -hmm. interviews. You said the biggest difference that you had in your business growth was your portfolio yeah. and your your website so what is the best way to update some of that um without giving it again yeah. too so, much detail? <laughs> um first of all doing the work that you want to get hired to do so if you want to do engraving at events definitely find some old bo fragrance bottles find some old wine bottles and engrave to your heart's content and take some pictures the next thing is to obviously have a website so people can find you because as great as instagram is you don't own that you don't own those followers you don't own that space on the internet but you will own your website so having your own website is incredibly important and putting your portfolio somewhere that can't actually be taken away from you. And then one of the other things, once you've actually got that website up and running is getting your SEO together. So your search engine optimization and not just like <laughs> what I had done in the beginning, which was calligraphy in Johannesburg, Johannesburg calligraphy in like every second sentence doesn't read like a person. It might be good for SEO, but humans <laughs> don't like to read that. So, you know, just saying location, location, location doesn't make sense, but getting your website to read and getting it to convey what your ideal client would be looking for. So putting yourself in the shoes of your ideal clients to make sure that your, your SEO is working and that you are attracting the people who you do want to get paid from to do work with. Yeah. So identifying your ideal client, creating the portfolio and the products that you want to get hired on for and really updating your website so that it yeah. speaks to your ideal client. Love it. Perfect. Ah, amazing. You're like my <laughs> friend and joy right now. So I'm like so happy. <laughs> You've accomplished some pretty big things so far. We've only been working together for about eight months now. Where do you see yourself going and how is the Craft Academy helping you to achieve So what I do see myself doing is removing a lot of the in-studio work that I do, like personal commissions. Even though they are the way that I started, I do work full time and it is incredibly important for me to balance my days and balance my time. And, you know, because I am a director at a company, my time is incredibly precious. So I do need to balance my time a lot more effectively and I do want to focus more on events and workshops so that I don't have to you know work 16 hour days trying to keep both of my my jobs alive but the best thing about that is that I can join the the coaching calls during the week and ask any questions that I need to check in with anyone have a bit of a buddy system going with one of the other craft academy members and just make sure that I am 
not working those 16 hour days and that I am prioritizing both myself and my, my work as well. Coming out with more, you know, multiple forms of income, focusing more on like yeah. passive income specifically. Are you coming out with any so, courses? So I actually do have something very exciting that I'm working on. Um, so Rosie, you and I have spoken about this, but it will be a workshop here in South Africa. So an in-person workshop for Procreate Calligraphy. So digital calligraphy for anyone who's looking to get into that because paper calligraphy is accessible, but I feel like like there is a lack of resources, at least in terms of, of personal and one-on-one and -on -one attention with digital calligraphy here in South Africa. So I'd like to pioneer that as well. And maybe maybe I'll get to work with Apple. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> Big dream. <laughs> <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I love that. So yeah. putting it onto the universe, we're manifesting. Apple reaching out. Oh my God, that would be so cool if you were teaching iPad calligraphy yeah. at like an Apple conference in South Africa. I would, I would fly over there and I would I'm, I'm putting it out there, let's see what happens. <laughs> you never know where it's gonna take you, yeah. so why not dream big? I think we're coming towards the end of the conversation. So if you guys have any questions, make sure you drop that into the comments and we'll try to answer that. So a couple last pieces of questions and I really like asking this to all of the interviews that I do. Um, what has been your most favorite part as a calligraphy business my owner? Part. Oh, wow, I like that. I think my favorite part has actually been pivoting my business towards events and not only being able to be at the event because that's always quite prestigious, you know, sitting at a, at a Dior boutique sitting there all dressed in black looking super formal and super fancy that's not the best part the best part for me is when i'm at a live event is seeing people's reactions when they see their name being written or they see their art and being personalized that for me is just oh it's my favorite part <laughs> i love it so much <laughs> oh, those reactions are what i live for like that really makes me feel like you know like i get the the butterflies and yeah. it just makes me so happy so 100 percent agree with you what a advice would you give to someone who's thinking about investing? In this house? is something that I have said to myself um, and I will say it to anyone, no matter what investment, but specifically obviously in, in the context of the Craft Academy here is that an investment in yourself is an investment in your future. Actually, one of my favorite quotes of all time ties into this quite nicely. It is a quote by a lady by the name of Karen Lamb. She says, a year from now, you'll wish you had started today. And, you know, it's a piece of advice that is always so, so relevant, no matter what you're doing, because investing in yourself and in your skills is something that cannot be taken away from you. And it is something that will be with you forever. The main reason why I started the Craft Academy is because like you, I was experimenting from 2017 to maybe 2021, just not really knowing yeah. who my ideal client was, what my niche was going to be, how to run a business and yeah. how to run a profitable one. And it took me so many years to figure that out by myself and it wasn't until i invested in another program that yeah. my business started to take off so i got a lot more visibility during that time and a lot of it came from honing in on what my intentions were what my mission and yeah. purpose was with my business and so i used all of that information and experience and condensed it into the craft academy so it's literally everything that i already know and what i wish i know now sorry <laughs> everything mm -hmm. that i wish i knew back then it, plus everything you know now so that you can skip you know the four or five years of experimentation and really get to that path of success yeah so honestly I, I feel exactly um, the same and it, it really does show as much as i've been running my business before i didn't see results as much as i had mm -hmm. once i had the accountability and the community around the craft academy yeah think of it like going to school to learn chemistry you know it's like yeah very similar to that it's like signing up for a fast track course to yep. a successful business. So I think the last question for you is, what would you tell a calligrapher who is trying to pioneer their area, who's basically trying to build a calligraphy business in a new country where live events and calligraphy is not really well do known it. yet? Don't hesitate, just do it. Invest in whatever you need to, specifically the Craft Academy, build your portfolio, get your website going and start pitching to clients. Honestly, there is no better time than today to start. Like that quote I said earlier, if you don't start today, you're gonna wish you had. And you know what, if you don't do it, someone else will. So if you have the opportunity, mm -hmm. go for it. Yeah, I also saw another quote. The best time to plant a tree was yeah. Yeah. 30 years ago. The next best time to plant yeah. a tree is today. <laughs> so that's very, very similar to, to that quote. Yeah, so. I couldn't agree more. Oh my gosh, okay. Yeah, so 
So I am super thankful. Thank you, Monique, for coming on and sharing your experiences. I'm so happy that you decided to invest in yourself and the program. I think your experience is going to help shed light on the calligraphy industry all around the world. And I'm excited to hopefully take the Craft Academy more globally and really create a global phenomenon of calligraphy. So I have known and mentored Monique for just about eight months now, and I'm so proud of the growth that she's experienced. She's been able to work with amazing brands like Dior, Mont Blanc, Paco Rabanne, and there's so much more coming down the line for her. So make sure you give her a follow so that you can see exactly what she's working on. With the transformation that Monique has experienced, you know, we're here to prove to you that our methods work all around the world. And we have students in the UK, Germany, New Zealand, and Canada, and so many of them are pioneering their own ways as calligraphers. And it's awesome to know that you're not alone, no matter how isolated you feel in this journey, we are here for you. And if this interview resonated with you and you want this transformation for yourself, all you have to do is book a call with me or my team. Just go to wondercrafter.com slash apply and we'll help you build the business of your dreams, get that financial security and really start designing and living the life that you want for yourself. So thank you so much, Monique. Thank this you. was amazing. And I'll see you yeah. this week I'll on see you our <laughs> Bye.